Hello, everyone. I hope this message finds you well. Finally, I have the opportunity to do this tutorial on how to become a registered out-of-state telehealth practitioner provider for the state of Florida. So the first thing you will do is you will put this web address in your browser, flhealthsource.gov slash telehealth slash, and it will bring you to this screen. Now, for people who live in Florida, you cannot do this. You have to go through the procedures and protocols of what you need to do to be licensed in Florida. So this is for anybody else who does not live in Florida, and they make that very clear by listing this multiple times here, pretty much. So once you get here, you will have to print out the application. So if you go to the second paragraph where you see this link right here, you will click on that, and then that'll take you to this application. Now, the application's pretty simple. It's nothing complex at all. So you'll fill out all the information for personal information, number one. Then you'll scroll down to number two, and you have to list what your profession is. So you're either a licensed clinical social worker, a licensed professional counselor, licensed mental, mental health counselor, therapist, licensed marriage and family therapist, whatever it is that you are, that's your designation of being a licensed therapist, you will put it right here. If you go down here, you will have to provide your license number, what state you're in and work from, the original date that it was issued, and also the expiration date. And then you have to provide a license verification form. For every state and district, it's going to be different. It's gonna look different. So you have to go to your state board's website and you have to find where can you order a license verification form. Since I am in Georgia, I will have to go to my state board's uh, profession, excuse me, and once I am there, again, this is only for Georgia, I would have to go under, let me find it right quick, yes, here, you will go under licensing, and then you will go under order Georgia license verification. A page will open up that looks like this. Again, this is for Georgia. All states are going to be different. And you fill in the information based on the application. So this is how, when you request that license verification form, this is the address, oops, excuse me, that you will use to send it to them. And once you go through all that, and you can do that. Now you have the option to do it by email address if you want to and how it needs to be processed. So figure out your state board's licensing board, excuse me, and also where can you get a verification form? You may be able to do it online or you may be able to do it via old school paper and pen. So once you get through that part, and you've requested it from your state board's website, you'll continue to go down and you'll put in any information that F Florida needs. And then you will put in your education history, any postgraduate graduate, excuse me, training that you have, any board certifications and specialties that you have, then filling out, have you had any disciplinary concerns, over the course of your career and also you will have to put down that you have professional liability coverage you will have to put that down if you do not put that down 
is going to, you're going to run into the issue of not getting this registration at all. So you will have to check that and you will also have to put down your provider, the policy limits, and if it's covered. Now for who I am with, because um, I have cyber liability insurance on top of my professional liability insurance, I asked them about this and they said, for me, yes, it's covered, but it's going to depend on your insurance provider. So reach out to them and they will be able to help you. And then on the last page, you will have to have a registered agent. A registered agent is somebody who will take your quote unquote postal mail, make copies of it, and send it to you via email. Now, the best way to find a registered agent is if you go on this page and you go to frequently asked questions, it will bring you here. Frequently asked questions is going to be on the top. Then you scroll down a bit until you get to what is a registered agent, <clears throat> excuse me, and how do I designate one? And it will tell you in detail what that is. And it is something that is required if you want to get the out-of-state registered telehealth provider um, designation from the state of Florida. So they even say here, the easiest way that this can be, be found is at this web address. Click on records and choose registered agent name. So let's go through that. This will open up. You click on records. And you click on registered agent name. And of course, the site will go down. <laughs> of course. Of course, because why wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> you can all, <laughs> sorry, the, the beauty of uh, technology here. So since that link didn't work, let's give this one a go. So you can review re register agents. If you keep scrolling down toward the bottom, you can click on here at this link and hopefully it will work. And then choose out of state telehealth provider and hit search. So if you go down to here, where you see profession, out of state telehealth provider, I'm trying to find that for mental health. Boom, boom, boom. You may have to scroll down quite a bit to get to it. <laughs> Sorry, you might be hearing me humming as I am trying to find this. Things have changed in the last year or two since I've done this. Um, yes, here we are. You'll find licensed mental health counselor out of state, out of state telehealth. That's for me because I'm a counselor. If you're a marriage and family therapist, go up a little bit and you'll see that. And if you're a clinical social worker, go up a little bit and you see that. But I'm going to do it for me since I'm a counselor. And then hit make sure it's practicing status because you don't want um, any people who have retired or closed out their accounts to show up to and you hit search you will see all these people's names all these different licenses and designations every single one of these people will have not only their information but also who their registered agent is so you can go and browse around and see who they have so let me go back a bit so I'm going to put in my last name just to kind of show you what this looks like. And then practicing status and then licensed mental health, ad state, telehealth, etc., etc. 
So you'll see my name show, shows up here. It tells you my registration. It shows you when I got it. It shows the license that I had, that I have in order to get this designation. <clears throat> and if you keep going, you'll see register agent. And this is who I'm with. So I had to browse through multiple people's names. I even divided it out by state to see who from Georgia has this um, designation and who are the different registered agents. So this registered agent translates to this is who I'm with, Florida registered agent.net. 50 bucks a year. All my postal mail gets forwarded to my email address. I have a business address for anything that I need to do for Florida and it's taken care of. Now, different registered agents are going to have different pricing. Some is lower than this. That starts at like $35 and then you have some that can go up to $100, $200 a year. It depends on what you want want and what you're looking for. So let's take another example just to kind of give you an idea. So under profession, I'm going to put licensed, oops, just passed it, licensed mental health counselor out of state. And then I'm going to put it by, let's just say, the zip code that I live in, which is 30039. And then I hit search. So there's only three of us <laughs> that have done this. But as you can see, it shows the name, the license, you know, and clicking on whomever license that you choose. Of course, this is taking a really long time. There you go. And you see when people did theirs, what license it was in order for them to do this, and then who their register agent was, is, which is the exact same as mine. Imagine that. Imagine that. So play around with it for a little bit, and then whoever you decide to go with for the, um, who you're going to put on your application you will put the name of the agent, the physical address, which translates to, let's see, so I can make sure everyone is clear on this part. So it'll be that this right here, the name and the address, if that's who you want to choose or anybody else you want to choose, and you will place that here. After you do that, then you sign, sign it, and date it. And then you have two options of how to send this. You can either send it postal through here, oops, through this address, or you can email it. I emailed mine, and within less than two days, I got a notification that they have my information. They were waiting for the my license verification form to come through and by the beginning of the next week I got a letter that showed that congratulations you completed information you got your form and one more thing before I finish because I want y'all to see what this looks like so if you scroll down a bit this is what it looks like. <clears throat> so it says my name, says this, congratulations, you did all the things you were supposed to do. I am a licensed, excuse me, a registered out-of-state telehealth provider for mental health. Go down here. And as long as you keep up with your CEUs, pay for your license renewal and stay out of trouble, it will remain active and that'll be, you'll never have to re-renew it. You may have to change some things in your, um, in their database in terms of your, now my license instead of 2022 is going to say 2024 because we go every two years here in Georgia. 
So, you know, as long as you do what you need to do, that's it. And that's what it looks like. And it's usually pretty quick turnaround, too. So that is all. I hope this was informative for you. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Take care.